Welcome to another Fast Tips video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I am your instructor, Richard Rost. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to switch between open applications using the app activate command in Microsoft Access. A couple of weeks ago, I released the Send Keys video. And in that video, I show you how to open another application from Access. And then you can use the Send Keys command to send keystrokes to it as if you were typing at the keyboard. So we learned how to use shell to open up notepad and send keys to it as if you were typing. And I've gotten a lot of emails since then people asking me, well, what if notepads already open? I don't want to open another copy of it. I want to like go back and forth between access and notepad or between two different applications. How do I do that? Well, there's a command called app activate that lets you activate another application. Basically, it sends focus to that application. So in this video, I'll show you how to do that. But first, this is a developer video. What does that mean? That means you're going to need to know a little bit of VBA. So if you've never done any programming before, go watch this video. It's absolutely free. It's on my website. It's on my YouTube channel. It'll teach you everything you need to know to get started programming in VBA in about 20 minutes. So go watch that and come back if you've never done any VBA before and you want to learn. And also go watch my sleep video. We're going to need to have a sleep timer between commands because you can't just open up and switch between different applications and send keys immediately. You've got to open it up, wait a second, then you can send some keys, wait another second, and then switch back. If you do it all without any pauses in there, it causes problems. So go watch the sleep video too and get that code. Okay, so here I am in my Tech Help free template. This is a free database. You can download a copy off my website if you want to. But for this example, you can use pretty much any database that you want. Let's go to design view. Let's just repurpose this button here. We'll make this my app activate button. Let's right click, go to build event, open up the code builder. Here we go. Okay. Now in the last class, we learned how to open up notepad and that's just going to be shell and then notepad.exe comma, and you want to use VB normal focus. So it opens up in the foreground and has focus. You don't want it minimized. You, I mean, you could open it maximized if you want to. And remember, if you're using an application that's not part of Windows, chances are you need the full path in here. Like if you want to open up your web browser or Microsoft Word or something like that. I talk about all that fun stuff in the shell video. So now I can go in here, save changes, open it back up again, click the button. And then Notepad pops right up. It actually opened up on my different monitor, so I had to move it over here and cheat. So there we go. Let's do it again. There we go. <laughs> it usually remembers the last spot where you opened and closed it. Now, if I want to send some text to it, I like to wait a second. I didn't cover the sleep function in the other video, but usually if you're just opening up one application, you can send keys right to it. But just to be safe, I always do a sleep 1000. It's sleep one second. Those are in milliseconds. And then send your keys. So send keys. I, this is Captain Kirk or whatever. Okay. All right, save it, come back over here, click, and there you go. See, it opened it, it waited a second, and it sent the keys. Now, let's say after that, we want to open up Calculator. Okay, so let's go back over here. Again, I'm going to sleep a thousand. Shell, and it's calc.exe. Again, part of Windows, BB normal focus. Okay, wait a second. And then we're going to send keys... Let's send it, uh, let's make it add up four plus five. So we need four. Now plus is a special character for send keys. So it's got to be inside of curly braces. And then five and then equals. We're going to send that. And hopefully it'll be displaying nine, right? Sleep another second. And then we're done. Save that. Come back in here. Hit the button. Ready? Let's make sure notepad is closed first. Hold on. Close this. Okay, don't save changes. Ready? Here we go. Fresh start. Go. There's that. Hi, Captain Kirk. And it opened up calculator and gave me a nine. Yeah, this opened up on my other screen too. Let's do it one more time. <laughs> Ready, go. Perfect. Okay, now, if I issue another shell command for notepad, it's going to open up another copy of notepad. All right, watch this. Let's close these both down again. If I do, let's do the same thing again. I'm just going to copy that, come down here. All right, and paste in, uh, this is Mr. Spock. And let's put, some, let's put some enters in here, too. Enter, like that. Put a couple enters in. 
so they're not one on top of each other. Okay, so this should open up a second copy of Notepad. Ready? Here we go. It's Captain Kirk. Calculator. Second copy, there's Mr. Spock. Okay, that's not what we want, though. We want both of those to be in the same instance of Notepad. So we're going to use App Activate to activate this application. All right, once again, let's close these down. Save changes, no. Save changes, no. Close that. Now, in order for this to work, you have to have at least part of the application name. So if you open up Notepad, you get Untitled Notepad. All right. Now, the app activate command does its best to guess what application you want. The best thing you could do is give it this exact caption. Whatever appears down here on your title bar, that's the caption. All right, you want to try to give it that exactly if you can. But if you can only give it notepad, that usually works. Or the beginning of it, for example. So what I'm going to do is instead of shelling notepad, get out of here. I'm going to say app activate, and it's untitled dash notepad. That's the exact caption. I've tried it, and just notepad works fine, too. Okay? We'll talk about these other parameters in just a minute. All right, let's see if this works. Ready? Come back over here. Click. There's Captain Kirk. Go over to calculator. Type in that. Go back to notepad and put in Mr. Spock. See that? Now they're in the same instance of notepad. And let's go back to calculator now. Close this, save no, da da da. Okay, and let's go over to calculator. So let's sh uh, that shell app activate. And this is just calculator. Calculator. That's what appears in the title bar. And then we'll do something similar. Let's do, uh, let's do, uh, 2000 plus 555. Whatever. Okay, save it. One more try. Here we go. Go. Captain Kirk. 4 plus 5 is 9. Mr. Spock. And back to the calculator again for a big one. There you go. And you're done. It's that simple. Maybe throw a beep at the end, right? Beep. Want to hear two beeps? Put a sleep in the middle of them. If you do two beeps by themselves, they won't hear it. Sleep. Thousand. And then beep again. I'll talk about that in the sleep video. Okay. Now, a couple things you got to know about App Activate. First of all, let's go over to the Microsoft page on that. Here's Microsoft's page on App Activate. Okay? I'll put a link to this down below. You can click on it and go read this if you want to. Okay, here we are on Microsoft's page for App Activate. A couple things you got to know. Right here, first of all, title. Okay, it says a, a string expression specifying the title in the title bar of the application window that you want to activate. We've already covered that. Now, you can get something called a task ID returned by the shell function to use in place of title. However, in my experience, this doesn't always work. The shell ID is extremely notorious for not working. At least in my case, in my history, I always use the caption. Okay, let me show you. So for example, all right, you're supposed to be able to set up an ID for each of your applications that you open. So for example, let's go uh, dim... Uh, let's call it Notepad ID. We're going to make it a variant so I don't have to specify a type. And then Calc ID, which is also a variant. A variant basically means you don't know what the data type is. It can hold any data type. All right, now here we'll say Notepad ID equals shell. And now since we're returning a value from shell, shell is one of those things that can be both a function and a sub. If you're, if you're just calling it as a sub, you don't need the, the parentheses. But since we're going to be returning a value from it, we do need to put parentheses around it. All right. So that's going to get whatever shell returns to notepad ID. And what does it return? It returns a number representing that window. You can message box it to see it if you want to. Okay. Now down here, instead of saying app activate notepad, you can just say app activate notepad ID like that. Okay. And let's, let's see if it works. We'll still call uh, calculator the old fashioned way. Ready? Here we go. Click. Okay. And open it up, put the captain Kirk goes over to the calculator and it finds it just fine and goes back over and puts Mr. Spock in. No big deal. Okay. Now let's do the same thing with calculator. Come over here. Okay, we got calc ID. All right, we're going to say here, same thing, calc ID equals shell. 
that. So it's going to get that return value of whatever shell brings back, puts it in a calc ID. And then instead of app activate calculator, we're going to app activate calc ID. Okay, you'd think that should work just fine, right? Here we go. Wait for it. Okay, back to notepad. And boom, there's your error. Right here. Invalid procedure call or argument. Debug. That line throws it. There's the number. That's what it, that's what shell returned. Why this doesn't work, I don't know. And I've, in the past, I've spent hours and hours trying to figure this out. And I can't. So I just always stick with the caption. If one of you knows why this happens, let me know. And I'll make a video about it and give you full credit. Because I got no clue. But I'm going to leave both of these scenarios in here for the gold members when you download this database. So what we'll do is we'll undo that and we'll go back to just that. And I'll get rid of calc ID. All right. And I'll put in here calling ID doesn't work. Why? No idea. I seriously have no idea. <laughs> it gets the ID just fine from shell, but that doesn't just there you go. But anyways... Like I said, I've always used the caption and I've never had a problem with it. And you can even, like I said, you can even guess at the caption and it, it gets it half the time. Okay. Uh, maybe it has to do something with having two or more applications being in use. I don't know. But I've had that, I've had that same problem happen with only one application that I'm shelling to. So it's not just the fact that it's calculator. It's not the fact that it's got two of them. I, I don't know what it is. Uh, there's another parameter that, again, I've never used. I never had a need to use it. And this basically says that um, if the calling application, in other words, access, doesn't have focus, it waits until access has focus to activate the other application. I, I, again, I've never had a need for this one, so I've never used it. Here's some more examples down here. They use the application ID. Okay. And that's pretty much it. So there you have it. There's how you can use uh, shell to open an application, send keys to send keys to it, sleep to wait, put proper pauses, and app activate to go back and forth between them. And if you guys really, really like this stuff, because I've gotten a bunch of feedback on this. I didn't think so many people were going to be interested in this stuff. If you want to see more, let me know. Post a comment down below. I personally, even though I don't use send keys in access, because there really is no need to, I do use access to control other applications. Like I've got a routine like this that I built that opens my web browser, launches my bank website, logs me in automatically, and actually gets my account information. So there's all kinds of things you can do with this. I'm happy to make more videos on it if you guys are interested. Post some comments down below. And yes, 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 I know that it's not the most 100% reliable way to go about working with web stuff. You want to use an API if an API is available, but not every web service has an API available. And, you know, some uh, websites you can open up in a web browser control in access and control them with JavaScript. But again, some, you know, websites don't offer that either. So like my bank website, it's impossible to do anything except just control the browser using send keys and app activate and all this stuff. So if you guys want to learn more about this stuff, let me know. Um, that's about it. If you like this kind of stuff and you want to learn more about developing applications with Microsoft Access and programming and VBA and all that good stuff, check out my developer lessons. I got right now I'm up to 42 lessons on all kinds of different stuff. And I start from the beginning, level one, level two, level three, and we go right through it. So you don't have to jump around between different videos. But uh, I cover pretty much everything there is to know about developing and access. So check them out. So there's your fast tip for today. I hope you learned something. And we'll see you next time. If you enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up and post any comments you may have. I do try to read and answer all of them as soon as I can. Make sure you subscribe to my channel, which is completely free, and click on the bell icon to select all to receive notifications when new videos are posted. Make sure you click the show more link down below the video to find additional resources and links. You'll see a list of other videos, additional information related to the current topic, free lessons, and lots more. YouTube no longer sends out email notifications when new videos are posted, so if you'd like to get an email every time I post a video, click on the link to join my mailing list. Even if you don't want to become a member, feel free to donate to my tip jar. Your patronage is greatly appreciated and will help keep these free videos coming. I got puppies to feed. How do you become a member? 
Click on the Join button below the video. After you click the Join button, you'll see a list of all the different membership levels that are available, each with its own special perks. Silver members and up will get access to all of my extended cut tech help videos, one free beginner class each month, and more. Gold members get access to download all of the sample databases that I build in my tech help videos, plus my code vault where I keep tons of different functions that I use. You'll also get a higher priority if you decide to submit any tech help questions to me, and you'll get one free expert class each month after you finish the beginner series. Platinum members get all the previous perks, plus even higher priority for tech help questions, access to all of my full beginner courses for every subject, and one free developer class each month after you finish the expert classes. These are the full length courses found on my website, not just for access to. I also teach Word, Excel, Visual Basic, and lots more. You can now become a diamond sponsor and have your name or company name listed on a sponsors page that will be shown in each video as long as you're a sponsor. You'll get a shout out in the video and a link to your website or product in the text below the video and on my website. But don't worry, these free tech help videos are going to keep coming. As long as you keep watching them, I'll keep making more and they'll always be free. Now, if you have not yet tried my free Access Level 1 course, check it out now. It covers all the basics of Microsoft Access. It's over four hours long, and I just updated it for 2021. You can find it on my website or on my YouTube channel. I'll include a link below that you can click on. And also, if you like Level 1, Level 2 is just $1. Yep, that's all, $1, and it's free for all members of my YouTube channel at any level, even supporters. Want to have your question answered in a video just like this one? Visit my tech help page on my website, and you can send me your question there. While you're on my site, feel free to stop by the Access Forum. Lots of good conversations happening there. Be sure to follow my blog, find me on Twitter, and of course, YouTube. Once again, my name is Richard Ross. Thank you for watching this tech help video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I hope you enjoyed this video and that you learned something today. I'll see you again soon.